So something to really talk about again, um, how the legendary concepts would have worked in Gen 1, uh, assuming that there was no such thing as static encounters. What happened was, it's like I've said before, like let's say legendary Pokemon could be caught more than once. Every single Pokemon would have a different encounter rate and a different catch rate, like they do now. But imagine how legendary Pokemon weren't found at certain locations. They weren't only there wasn't just one of them you could catch more than one of them it was just a very rare pokemon that was hard to find kind of think of it like a chancy like you know you could catch more than one chancy but chancy was hard to find and they say if you could find chancy you can consider yourself lucky and if you could actually catch one you'd be even more <laughs> lucky so basically chancy was a pokemon that really you know, it just showed how the Pokemon series was working. But with legendary Pokemon, with Pokemon that were actual legendary Pokemon, you wouldn't have, like, static encounters. Meaning, like, they wouldn't be at a single spot. And, you know, it would be like you'd have to go to the map that they're found, run around until you find the one you want. And you probably could get them because if you used max repels on a certain level, you would obviously be able to, or any kind of repel for that matter, you just have to be very careful with the, the levels that you're using. It's kind of like using the siren item from Final Fantasy IV. It would always bring out the rarest encounter rate in that in that room that had wild encounters. And it's like the same thing with Pokemon in this case. So you would have to find a certain... Like Moltres would be found in the Cerulean Cave, which was the Moltres dungeon in the prototype. Zapdos was still found in the uh, power plant. And then, then you also had uh, Articuno, which was found in its, you know, um, area. So, what also happened was, there was a lot of ideas they must have had, too, that they changed over time. And then I guess they figured, you know, the legendary birds would be static encounters in certain areas, so they kept that concept. But what's just strange to think, though, is that, you know, if, if let's say, like, something like Dragonite or, and even the, um, Dragonite, the whole Dragonite family were legendaries, and let's say Arcanine and, and and uh, Growlithe were legendaries too, you know, if you really had that concept, it makes me wonder, like, how many other legendary Pokemon would there have been in Gen 1 that there could have been if they really did settle on 191? Because really, at the, the ones where I think of, there's really originally nine. There would have been, you would have had the four main, you'd have the three legendary birds, you would have Mewtwo and Mew, you would also have, you know, Dragonite, Artic you'd have Dragonite, um, Dragonair, and Dratini. And then you'd have Arcanine. But it's possible that Growlithe could have been a legendary Pokemon too. Because we, because in this case, they would have had legendary Pokemon that could have evolved. So in this case, Arcanine uses a Fire Stone, or would evolve from a Fire Stone. And then it also would, and then you'd also have, like, Dratini would level up. And I found this out interesting. On um, If you look at the Pokemon cards from, like, the Wizard of the Coast era, like the very first ones that came out, base set ones, Dragonite, well, in the Fossil set, uh, Dragonite actually had a level 45 level on it. It's possible that Dragonite wouldn't have evolved at level 55. It would have been at like level 45-ish. And I wonder if that's why Lance, like if you played the Gen 2 prototype, his Pokemon were much stronger and they were in the 60s. And it's kind of funny when you go back and fight him because you could actually get stronger too. It's actually very interesting to think that originally Lance's Pokemon could have been a lot stronger than what they were, but they still could have been Dragonites even if they would have lowered their levels. So, like, them being on, like, level 47 and level 50 instead of the level 55. It's very possible maybe at one point Dragonite's level was also level 45-ish. It's actually worth noting. But then again, I, I'm still more obsessed with the concept of, like, you know if they would have stuck with like if certain legendary pokemon could be found at certain areas and you could just catch more than one of them the one that really had me confused for the longest time was mewtwo because mewtwo in the storyline was still created and there was only one mewtwo so would that have meant that there's only one mewtwo and then once you catch mewtwo that's it hey probably but then again it still raises the question how the hell you would have gotten mew because mew was still in the game like, just add it a little bit later on, but if it wasn't due to cartridge limitations, and let's say the prototype data really did, and Pokemon really did end up being what it was, um, Mew still would have found its way into the game. But how would you have gotten Mew? Like, you know, that's uh, that's another question that's really kind of confused a lot of people, because even in the final version of Pokemon, the only way to get Mew was through a certain event. 
But how would you originally have gotten Mew? Like, Lou Gently. That's kind of something that's really thrown me off. Like, other than hacking, other than them just giving it out. But really, at some point, like, how would you have really gotten Mew? It's a question that I still can't figure out. But anyways... So yeah, the, basically the idea, the way it works, it would have been uh, with the Pokemon, is certain Pokemon would have been found at certain locations. However, Mewtwo would have been found in the Silthco, like after you beat Professor Oak, and that would explain why Professor Oak was a boss at one point. That explains why Pokemon had, it was a bunch of post-game, it was a boss rush basically. And then they took that concept and you could have challenge gym leaders over again, like in Gen 2 and etc this is also something that's funny in gen 2's prototype you actually could challenge more you could go back and challenge all the gym leaders again including red or including um if they would have kept that concept but instead it was blue that you could fight green but red was still just as strong as blue so it's possible blue and green so it's possible that you know I, I i think what they would should have done is i like what they did with red being stronger than green he's on mount silver in this case and so you would find him on mount silver you could fight him over and over again and he spawns after you beat the elite four again and then you could go back and fight all the gym leaders again and and challenge them to whatever rather than just being on a certain day at a certain place it's actually very interesting so that's how that would have worked out um it's interesting how like how some of the legendary Pokemon would have worked, though. Um, I'm still trying to think. Like they really should have kept that concept because you can catch more than one, and they're not super. They're, they might be rare, yes, but that would also explain why Giovanni had him at some point in the boss league and Gen One's uh, prototype. You know, it was a fight that was scrapped entirely. But with the prototype data that we do have, though, that would explain a lot and why the games were a little bit different. But at least now we have a better understanding of what direction they wanted to originally go in. And Professor Oak was indeed a powerful trainer, and he wasn't just, like, it, it, it's like they said, you know, him and Agatha were really good friends. And it was kind of interesting because Agatha kind of fell in love with him, sort of, too, but at the same time got annoyed with him because she couldn't beat him. She tried everything she could to beat him, but it was because he was always there sparring with her in a way that that's how she got into the Elite Four and managed to become so good at what she did. Not bad, if you think about it. It's interesting, actually, how um, that played out in the Pokemon universe for so long. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, I, I honestly think, if you really think about it, as far as all the Pokemon games go... Every Pokemon is different, every location is different, and they all have a different... I like the idea that they have where, like, certain things have to happen. Like, every Pokemon's got, like, their own little side quest, sort of, in order to obtain them. Whether they're found in a different location, whether they're found at a certain location. Or you have to do certain things to get to them. It's actually a cool concept. Kind of like a JRPG, you would expect. Pokemon does this well. So, with that being said... I wouldn't be surprised that there's more to it than that. But there always is. You know, again, Ken Sugimori even stated that with every Pokemon game, half of the ideas they have, if not most of them, get scrapped. So you can only imagine how many ideas they must have that they settle on. And then by the time they get done programming it, they just want to release it. You know, I, I can understand that. You know, it's it's not easy coming up with concepts, especially which ones do you keep and which ones do you scrap, you know? Something to think about. But again, you know, again, subscribe if you're not. I'll uh, definitely, I found more prototype data, like an analysis. So I'm going to be like going through it and just digging through it. We'll be making more videos about it and uh, talking about like some of the tile sets and all that, that they used, um, like the map design and all that. So it, it's interesting nonetheless. But again, and so yeah, I'll also have like, um, like something you can send me money if you want. It'll be in the description. Sometime I got to set it up, but it'll be there at some point. And, you know, like I said, if, you know, we'll figure this out because this is going to be something I'm doing for a full time at some point, even though I'm already doing other things. But I want to get back into the swing of making videos on YouTube because nobody else talks about this stuff. Um, I, I do believe Dr. Lava still does, but he doesn't cover some of the stuff that I do. Like, I, I really like to believe there's some things out there that if it wasn't for someone like me we wouldn't really have some of this data 
So just to kind of get it out there more so more people can kind of like read it themselves or really try to understand it. So, you know, if you're someone who wants to make like a Pokemon ROM hack, you can kind of get an idea of like unused concepts that would have been really cool in the end if they would have stuck with that instead.